Welcome again to De Haps with Monty and Steve. Monty Godek, Steve Woodhouse here along with Todd Weezer, the uh, chair of the, of the steering committee for the Tulip Time this year. Uh, welcome, Todd. Yep, thank you. Happy to be here. So th this is your fifth year on the committee you were telling me before we went on the air. Um, so how has it been be being on the committee all these years? It's, it's been a really a great learning experience. Uh, so um, my first uh, first year you're actually just in training. So you've got uh, the your outgoing committee member that you sort of partner up with to sort of learn the job. And then uh, theoretically your second, third, and fourth years you just fill your role. Um, fifth year you're, uh, you're the chairperson so you lead uh, lead the meetings throughout the year and help coordinate things in the event and next year will be my sixth year and that's when I get to train my replacement and uh, go off into the sunset. <laughs> are you invited to be on the committee or how are you selected? Yeah, um, actually you're invited so uh, there's just uh, different ways to get involved so before my involvement on the committee actually I had uh, volunteered to drive a float so I was a float driver for two or three years and you just get to know some people and uh, in my case it was just a, a fun way to stay involved in the community um, it's great to get to I get to meet work with people I probably never would have met before um, and really just uh, showcase our community which float did you drive uh, my specialty was the walk and float, um, and I always joke because that one has a very small little space, the driver, mm -hmm. and I'm probably one of the only people that would fit in there. Okay, yeah, I'm a very big guy. Yeah, I, I wouldn't fit. I'd get stuck. So what have you enjoyed about being part of the committee this year, just being able to showcase Pal as you are? Yeah, I mean, obviously, this year's special in a way that uh, we're basically going to be able to get back to normal. So obviously the last two years were extremely difficult. I mean, two years ago when we had to cancel the event because of COVID was a very difficult decision. Um, and even last year I think was even more challenging in that uh, we felt like we, we basically reinvented the event on the fly in a way. So um, just trying to figure out the adjustments we needed to make. So it's, uh, it's great to have uh, what I'll call a normal tulip time this year. How did COVID and uh, the epidemic affect Palos e uh, economy and, and tulip time in general? Yeah, so uh, I mean obviously two years ago, uh, I mean I think both specifically the historical society but then the community in general. I mean there are some of the downtown businesses that a significant uh, portion of their revenue is tied to those three days. So uh, by not having that event, um, some of those businesses took a very, very significant hit. So we're ready to bounce back this year. It's going to be much better. We're going to have, you know, we're just talking about how the weather will play. Yep. We, we can't control that. Mm -hmm. keep, keep our fingers crossed. Exactly. Nice, good, good weather. Um, but we're, we're going to have thousands of people back here in town, and we're hoping for a record crowd, yep. for a new record every year. Um, but what kinds of things do you have planned, like anything different or anything new to help bring people back? Um, again, I think probably this year, probably not so much new as a uh, reset and get back to normal. So, uh, so the big change is, uh, I mean, the floats are um, the parade. So we'll be back to having the two parades, uh, one in the afternoon, one in the evening. Um, get back to our Dutch market. We'll be at full capacity. Um, with uh, with uh, COVID last year, we sort of ran at a reduced reduced number of vendors. Um, we didn't have the inflatables. Um, but some takeaways last year, some of the adjustments, we got some very positive feedback on some of the some of the changes we made. One, um, last year when we didn't have the parades, we put the floats on display, Got people got up close, got to take some pictures, um, and we got some great feedback there. So uh, we're specifically uh, setting a, flu a few floats aside this year um, for just that purpose. On the north side of the square in the old Wells Fargo parking lot, we'll have some floats on display. Oh, that'd be nice. That's, yeah, that's a cool idea. Yeah. So, um, what about like uh, your food vendors? Your, I know churches and clubs in town really rely on the revenue yep. from tulip time. Are they all coming back? Yeah, um, that's uh, another, I guess, change or get back to normal. So last year, um, with uh, COVID, along with uh, some uncertainty with uh, attendance, uh, several of the churches and organizations chose not to participate. So uh, this year we're happy to say that uh, pretty much all of them will be back. That would be fun. I, I always work in the Lions booth, the Sully Lions <laughs> Club booth. That's yeah. I'm a Lions member in Sully, and, and uh, I end up 
making uh, corn dogs and things like that. And the strawberry smoothies are always popular too. So yep. I'm looking forward to it. To your, to your point on the financial side of it, yeah, I mean, some of those organizations also took a little bit of a hit there because uh, most of those, that's their big fundraiser for the year. So not having it uh, made some, created some difficulties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are your favorite aspects of the tulip time? Uh, I probably what I enjoy most is again showcasing our community and getting in front of the general public. I mean, uh, talking to our visitors. Um, I mean, Pella is a really special community. I mean, we sort of take it for granted after living here. I guess it's my 29th year in Pella, and um, but uh, it's fun um, talking to some of the outsiders. I shouldn't say our visitors. Yeah. Um, because it's it's interesting. Uh, so during tulip time, I'm I'm in my golf cart. I've got my Dutch costume. I've got my name badge, and um, it's interesting the number of people that come up to me and just uh, talk about our community and how great it is. Yeah, we, we, I love hearing that too. You know, when I'm walking around tulip time and just interacting with different people. Yep. That that's like the whole point of it. You know, obviously the tulips are pretty, and yep. hopefully they're pretty again this year. <laughs> I'm sure they will be. Uh, if not, if people come ahead of time. We'll let you know. We'll let you know when yeah. they're yes. blooming. So yeah. Uh, but you know, as we've seen, you know, Pella become more diverse and seeing changes and stuff. Uh, do you think you guys are going to stick with the tulip time and the whole Dutch theme in the foreseeable future, or has that ever even come up in the committee? Uh, uh, today, no, that's that hasn't come up. Uh, again, I think uh, tulip times gradually evolving over the years. But um, again, the whole the whole point is to really uh, to focus on the community, our Dutch mm -hmm. heritage, and that's uh, something we're very proud of. Yeah. Do you have any questions, Monty? Oh, I have tons of questions. Tons of questions. <laughs> been off yeah. Yeah. You guys are going to let me off easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so here's my first. Now, this is a do or die question okay. right here. Okay. What's your favorite thing to eat at Tulip Time? Oh, uh, oh it's got uh, to be probably uh, the uh, Dutch cheeseburger. Yeah. Dutch cheeseburger? Where do you get that? I get that. We get that at the St. Mary's uh, Church Catholic okay. booth. Yep, right there on, uh, I believe it's Broadway. And what makes it a Dutch cheeseburger? Uh, it's the pella bologna and uh, the gouda cheese. Wow, that sounds yep. fantastic. <laughs> it is. I've had it before. You've had it yeah. too? I, I always stick with the gold standard corn dogs and stuff like that, so I'm going to have to branch out a little bit. And see, Marcy has to, you know, get your strawberry smoothie every mm -hmm. year. So I didn't realize yeah. you were lying. I'll have to tell her that. You can give her the recipe, and then yeah, she'll be happy. It comes in a bag. It comes in a bag. <laughs> yeah, you just you just grind it up with ice. It's simple. <laughs> well, hey, okay. <laughs> Learning the secrets here on yeah. the haps. But no, there's a lot, of, a lot of great food. Um, happy that all the vendors will be back. So. Um, how many vendors are there? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I have to check my cheat sheet. So I, I would say probably approximately 24, 25. Okay. Yep. And is there more than one Poffergy vendor? Uh, historically, I think, yes, there's typically two. Um, obviously, Kiwanis is the big one. And then I believe there's a central uh, acapella group who also does uh, Poffergies. And now, see, I, I've noticed that there seems to be a good balance too between sweets and meat and, yep. and other mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to choose between which meats and sweets you want to go for every time you're yep. walking around you yep. gotta cover all the food groups exactly yeah well the lions club and the Sully lions club has the, the beef brisket mm -hmm. which is really really popular we run out every year is that like a sandwich i haven't eaten that yeah, it's for a, a while sandwich. yeah, yeah it's a sandwich. slabs of beef on on sandwich yeah and um, it, is the Tulip Court, have they already begun their tour, their statewide oh, yeah. tour oh, yeah. in different places? Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, they've been out promoting our community. Mm -hmm. I think uh, actually just this past week, I think I saw that they uh, visited the governor. Yep. Who pays for that? Um, actually, um, that's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> and, uh, I think we have a phone, we have a phone ringing. Oh, no. yeah, mine. <laughs> Sorry, I wondered. I thought aliens might be trying to communicate with us. So, uh, yeah, honestly, I'm not sure who pays for that. Okay. Yeah, I figured they'd have to have some um, kind of a budget to travel around the, the and state. You know and you know what? No, I think we're going to let Steve answer his phone in a second. Yep. There you go. I'll just call it later. And My bad. Yeah. And I think, I mean, yeah, you can start over here. I think my mic or my headphones might bounce out once in a while, but. Oh, that's why. Oh, that's why. They're not plugged in. Very well. 
There you oh, go. Now I can, now, they play, yeah. now I can hear much better. I was getting most of it earlier, but uh, that made a difference. Very good. Technology. Technology. See, I, I, I told you I wasn't the setup guy. <laughs> <laughs> Technology is my thing, I guess. There we go. Okay. So we don't know who pays for the Tulip Queen and the court to travel well, I, around. I, I, I can that, come back. That's okay. That's okay. Um, I, was I was just curious. No, and I, no. and I think actually there is, uh, I mean, there's a budget uh, that uh, each year, I believe, they uh, decide, I mean, where they're going to go. Some they go to every year, repeat, and some might vary from year to year. Do you think the governor's planning to come down here for Tulip Queen? I, we think so, but we don't have confirmation on that okay. yet. But normally she's, uh, I guess, what I'll call a regular. It's, okay. it's an election year, Monty. She'll, 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 she'll be here. <laughs> yeah. Should we call her and FaceTime her yeah. live on Dehaps here? We yep. should. Yeah, we'll do that. We could do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Did you make that change to the parade this year? You know, no politicians. Uh, I mean, normally, um, I mean, normally, historically, uh, I mean, there aren't many politicians. Now, uh, we all know sometimes in a convertible there is. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't know of any politicians that are going to be in the parade this year. Okay. It's an election year. That's, That's not a bad thing. We can leave politics out of two no, time. That, as they far can as I'm leave them in the Fourth of July parade. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. The, there's a time and a place. No, we and try. we do try. I mean, the the point tulip time and the parade too is again our community and Dutch heritage. So mm -hmm. that's why. Um, I mean, that's why we're pretty selective with the floats and what's theirs. That yeah, not just anyone's going to show up with a, a trailer that has whatever on it that it, it really needs to be about uh, I mean the Dutch our Dutch heritage in our community is there a process somebody goes through to get flow yeah. approval yeah yeah they're very very much so so there's a uh, there's guidelines and regulations that um, I mean any, anyone will be considered but uh, it needs to meet certain criteria okay yep. and so we're five weeks away from the big yeah. event yep. uh, I don't remember the correct dates uh, dates uh, the dates this year are May 5th 6th and 7th May 5th 6th and 7th yep so what will these final five weeks be like for, for you and the steering committee? I mean, I imagine you have a lot of work left to do. Yep, uh, they will be very hectic, uh, like we talked about a little bit before. Uh, I mean, the committee members are a year-round commitment. Um, I mean, typically uh, once a month meeting, but as we get closer to tulip time, uh, the frequency goes up quite a bit. Um, at this point, we're meeting at least every other week, um, in some areas weekly with your volunteers. So uh, this, is this is where things get real. I mean, we're into the details, getting all our, our volunteers lined up at the last minute, making sure we're going to pull this off and have a successful event. How many volunteers does it take to pull something like this off? Hundreds. So uh, there's, there, I guess I would, the way I put it, there's many levels of volunteers. I mean, us as a committee, we're, we're six people, but uh, I mean, beyond that, there are just groups upon groups that step forward that help in either, I mean, the historical village, I mean, people that drive floats, uh, push carts. Um, there's just multiple, multiple volunteers it takes to make this a successful event. And how, how does one become a volunteer? Do they reach out to you or is there? Um, I mean, the, the easiest way, actually, if they go into the Pell Historical website, I mean, there's a, a volunteer tab right there. So if they click on that, um, it, it shows some of the different areas people can help with and they can uh, share their contact info um, and someone will be reaching out to them. Okay. So you probably wouldn't have time to come back for a follow-up here after the... <laughs> I, I, I can always try to make time. <laughs> I was gonna say we might might have a little more hair yeah, pulled out or something. Yeah, it might be a little gray. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Speaking of pulling mm -hmm. pulling uh, things out, what what uh, tulips? What's the what's the deal? I, when, ever since I was a kid in high school here, there have been a rumor that if you pick a tulip, it's so many dollars for for during tulip time, and then so many dollars outside of tulip time. And is there a tulip enforcement? Uh, uh, I, portion I, of the police I, department. I've heard, I've, same, I've heard the uh, same uh, rumor over the years that I've lived here. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone arrested or fined for picking a tulip, but uh, I could imagine it's definitely frowned upon. We, yeah, we dissuade people <laughs> from doing so. Yep. You can look at them, you can take pictures of them, just don't pick them. Yep. <laughs> exactly. You gotta leave them there for the next yep. wave of visitors. Yep. So. Um, 
good? Yeah, that's all. That good? All right. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. Unless you're anything right. more. Yeah, no, I'm I'm good. We we've all been to Tulip Time a million times. So. I was gonna say, yeah, it's just gonna be nice to have it back. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Kind of COVID just destroyed yeah. everything for a couple yeah. years there. It's been a been a tough couple of years, but yeah. it's glad uh, so things no are getting better. So no masks nope. required anywhere nope. to look times. Nope, there will be no mask requirement. Um, again, to everyone's own personal choice. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, but no, no requirements. Again, our our, our event's an outdoor event. Um, so uh, but um, everyone needs to do what they're comfortable with. Excellent. And what yep. website would you recommend people check out for? schedules and updates i mean the pella historical website has a tab on it specifically for tulip time there'll be several Mm -hmm. links there we'll take them to the various schedules and um, some of our different events okay if you've never been to tulip time before come and check it out Uh, if you're a people watcher like i am uh it's it's an amazing event i just love watching people i can sit in a lawn chair for hours and hours and watch kids play and watch the the parade and watch the people enjoying it so it's a it's a lot of fun it is, and coordinating and getting all those kids in Dutch costumes, mm-hmm. you know, for it, all the parades. That, that's that's a lot of work. Yep. Yeah. The families, uh, it's really fun seeing the kids out there. And uh, yeah, I never owned a Dutch costume until I joined the steering committee. Do you have multiple wood, uh, pairs of wooden no, shoes? No, I have not done the wooden shoes yet. So. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. So you're not I'm truly. I'm probably, yep, not truly Dutch. Okay. But I, no exaggeration, I think during tulip time, I probably walk about. 15 miles a day, so I'm not. Uh, I, I can't sure even imagine the, doing that. The Dutch shoes. Dutch shoe. The wooden yeah. shoe would hold up. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it would. So. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for coming by, Todd. It's been good talking to you. Yeah, it's great talking to you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Yep. This has been DeHaps with Steve and Monty. We will see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>